So I want to ask you guys, what do you think about circuit one? You just have to take it because it's a cardio program, so you can get a degree, <laughs> or what? Just think about it. Yeah, it's just a super fundamental circuit theory before you get into more uh, deeper into electronics. So I give you some examples, like very simple, uh, you know, it's called a PCB board, but it's a prototype PCB. You are not doing anything to design it, it's just all the through holes, so you can buy it. Or like probably only 10 cents and these were built by middle school and high schoolers i i had a workshop with them a couple of months ago and they just came here for three hours and soldered it and make it work um so you guys i don't know if you guys have any soldering experience in the past but i can see that it's very simple and if you learn voltages and currents and you'll be able to build all these not these ones they're too simple like fancier stuff in the future, like robots or embedded systems. Um, and you can see everything is being driven by electrical circuits, right? Including all these benchtop equipment. If you open it up, you can see a lot of circuit board inside. And if you want to learn how to do it, how to debug it, fix it, or design it, even sell your products to some other people, and here's the starting point. Okay, I wanted you guys to, to be passionate about it. When I was in college, I was not, because the teacher didn't tell me why it's important. By learning all the KCL, KVLs, all the circuit rules and calculations, I was just asking, like, why we have to do it? But eventually, when I get into graduate school, you know, graduate school, right, still dealing with the circuit one stuff, I just found out this is super fun and super important. You have to understand the fundamentals of, uh, uh, of circuit one in order to perform in advanced level of uh, electronics uh, systems. Like this one has a battery here, it's a 9 volts battery. If you haven't taken circuit one, you probably don't even know what voltage means. Okay, so it's a nine volt battery, has two terminals, and you know how to use it. I, I promise, like you can put it in in the remote and turn on and switch in channels on the TV. You know how to use it. Um, but nine volts is a voltage between these two terminals. So the two terminals will provide a potential difference, and which can drive all the electrons across the circuit and to generate the energy or drive the motors or uh, show something on the display modules. And this is a jet header. You have seen this probably in uh, different places. And you plug in to the male version of it and then connect to the other terminal. Um, I don't have the cable here, but you plug in and the other terminal has adapter, connect to the battery so you can deliver voltages, uh, not voltages, but the voltage of nine volts to this power header. The power header will deliver voltage or the power to the switch. And so you can switch on and off to turn on and off this, this fan here on the board. Okay. And you do need a, uh, this is called a motor driver, which, you know, why do you need a motor driver? You have a battery, battery delivers the voltage to the, to the motor, it should spin. But why do you need a motor driver? The motor driver uh, directly connects to the, uh, to the battery, which will deliver a higher current to the uh, motor, if the motor has a usually 50 ohms internal resistance, which draws a lot of current, like a lot of terminology here, right? It's like current, voltages, power. But after circuit one, you'll learn all of these. And you can control the logic or control the speed of the um, motor by using, by toggling the uh, logic pins of the motor driver. It's called PWM, pulse width modulation. And you can, you know, uh, change the speed of the motor. It's the same principle. Pulse width modulation. Have you heard about this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So if you have a DC voltage like five volts, right? There's so zero volts to ground it. We got a five volts. You can power up something like a motor or LED. For example, I'm getting an LED here. Okay, it's gonna shine light. So five volts, you can definitely you need a resistor in here. A good question to ask, like why do we need a resistor in the circuit? Because I taught a, that's in this, that was a summer camp a couple years ago for high school students, and I talked about uh, resistors, and I never thought about it. That's the high schoolers will ask, like why do we need a resistor? You're supplying power to something, but you have to resist it. 
to some extent and then deliver a you know lower voltage to somewhere why do we need resistors yeah that's right yeah and definitely that's part of the answer and there's another way to answer that is because uh, diode it has a pretty low internal resistance and whenever you directly connect because i equals uh, voltage over you know resistance if you got five volts and you have a really low resistance i know this is not as that not that low but for example you got only 0 0.1 ohm i know it's higher than 0 0.1 0 0.1 ohm. it's probably tens of ohms for example if it's only like 0 0.1 ohm as extreme case you are getting how many how many amps or how, how much current Ohm's law, right? I equals V over R, right? You probably learned it from physics too. Yeah. So 5 volts over 0 0.1 ohms, which is voltage over resistance, you are getting like 50 amps. You know, ampage as a unit for current is a very large unit. You are thinking like 1 amp sounds like tiny, but not, actually not. Like 10 amps is huge. 1 amp is already pretty big. And 200 milliamps run goes through a cow can kill a cow only 200 milliamps okay so ampage is a high uh, very big unit so you are not thinking like 200 milliamps or 0 0.2 amps can kill a cow and you are running 50 amps through a little tiny led you are thinking it's gonna survive <laughs> it's gonna fry it okay so that's why you need something in the front to increase to boost what the resi resistance, if you add a 1k ohm here, resistor, and you're getting like I equals 5 volts over 1,000, 1,000.1 ohms, right? you can ignore that one pretty much, and you're getting somewhere around uh, 5 milliamps. It usually is safe, considered as safe current for the LED, so you can turn it on safely instead of uh, fry it. So this is one of the options, one of the functions uh, that why we need to use a resistor in the circuit. So what's the answer of it? Here in the interview, like they're asking. They won't ask that fundamental question, but in case, right, they're asking, why do we need resistors in the circuit? You can say, for example, here, you need a resistor to limit the current. Yeah, that's the way to answer it. Limit the current, okay? But there are so many other different places you need a resistor in a circuit and for different purposes. This is one of them, at least. Right? Another thing you need to know is uh, voltages. If I got voltage source here, like a battery, I know this battery is 9 volts, but you have seen other battery cells like AA battery. They can be 1.5 volts, right, usually for the AA, AAA battery cells. And here's this is a symbol for that battery cell. Okay, so the 1.5 volts means where to where is 1.5 volts. Yeah, so these two terminals, the difference between these two terminals are is 1.5 volts. You can measure it. So you are going to use a different multimeter, but I'm going to show you the, uh, this one very similar. So I'm going to change it to DC voltage. You can see, I'm going to measure it. And what you're expecting from the from the reading, what you're expecting from the, from the reading, if I probe it. So which one is plus? So this is a plus, right? So that's anode. So I'm supposed to use a red probe to the anode and the black one to the castle. The other one has to be the castle. So you're expecting what? 9000 it wouldn't be that that accurate, right? It's going to be something like higher or lower than that. Depends on how much you have been using this battery. Let's see. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty low. Okay. So if I swap the two probes, you're expecting what? Negative, negative uh, 7.78 volts, right? Because right now it's reading the difference. It's doing a subtraction. So subtracting the voltage, the potential from here to here. So this minus this one 
you are getting 7.78. If I do it inversely, you are seeing that it's going to be minus 7.7 A volts. Does that make sense? Is there a ground right now? Is there a ground? I don't. I know it's going to be confusing. What is a ground? Like ground is here. Like beginners usually you will, I, I believe. Yeah, I mean, in, in my mind, when, when I was teaching that class, I was always telling students, yeah, don't make it complicated. So ground, you just treat it as a zero reference voltage. It's just zero volts. Zero volts. Why is it important? Why is it super handy by having a ground? So, because every time, so the voltages are relative. When you are talking about voltages, you're comparing here to here. Right. For example, the voltage, uh, the battery here is, is labeling. The label is uh, nine volts, which means it's the voltage difference from the anode to cathode. It's from here to here. The voltage difference is nine volts. Okay. Do we have a ground for now. Is there a zero volt in the circuit if I don't connect it to any anywhere? No. There's no no ground, no reference. There's no reference. So here's a battery cell. Right, it's a nine volts battery cell. It's nine volts. I don't have a ground. So can I just probe here, use a red probe, and just say, hey, this point, this point, keep in mind, I'm not saying where compared to where as a voltage. I'm, I'm asking a node voltage. You will learn this uh, further in the, in, in, the, in the semester. So a node voltage. What's the voltage, what's the node voltage at this point if I don't connect this battery to anywhere? What's the node voltage to this point? Like um, VP, VN, like VP, right? VP. What's the voltage of VP? Whenever you are getting this question, you know VP just one point, then it's going to be one uh, node but you are not comparing to anywhere. So what's the voltage at VP if you don't connect this one to anywhere? It's a floating voltage. It's a floating voltage. Do you have a reference? You don't. You don't have a reference. If you don't have a reference, do you really know what's the voltage at here at this point? You don't have a reference. How do you know it? Right, you don't, you don't know that. So, if I ground it, that's a symbol of ground. Sometimes you'll see it looks like this anyway, okay? If you ground it, if you ground it, I connect this one, this point, the castle, to the, into the circuit. And I just told you, what's the voltage for the ground? Pin? Always? Zero. Keep in mind, ground zero, zero ground. No, actually not. Sometimes zero is not ground, but ground is zero volts, okay? <laughs> ground is zero volts, okay? And now can we claim the voltage at this point? Why? You have a reference. So we know here is zero volts. And what's the battery's voltage by the manufacturer? Nine volts. And from plus to minus, Okay, so the battery is going to boost. By how much? It's going to boost the voltage by 9 volts from minus 2 plus, right? So in that case, since we know here is 0 volts, we know it is 0 volts, 0 volts. And 0 volts is being boosted by 9 volts. So we know here it's going to be 9 volts. Compared to where? It's 9 volts. Compared to ground, it's 9 volts. Compared to somewhere else, it's not, not 9 volts anymore. Compared to the power grade, like 110 volts, it's not 9 volts anymore. But compared to the ground, it's 9 volts. So that's why sometimes you, are, you will see people are telling you the voltage across the resistor like VR, right? VR, you will see this on the uh, lab instruction. You'll see the voltage across the resistor is VR and VR equals something, right? That's a voltage drop. 
across the resistor. But sometimes in the circuit, if I draw a very simple resistor circuit, I'll ask you, like, what's the voltage here? It sounds different way to ask that same question, right? So this is the node voltage at this point, and this is the voltage difference between these two terminals. That's two different concepts. But if I ground this point here, then I know the voltage, I can just say, what's the voltage here? It's going to be the voltage across the resistor. Why is that? So if I ground this pane of the resistor, the one terminal resistor, so the voltage drop across the resistor, or the voltage difference of the resistor, two, ter two terminals, come equal to the voltage at this point. Why? If I ground one terminal, so the voltage at the other terminal is going to be the same as the voltage across that resistor, the voltage difference across that resistor, why? The reference ground, and then, what's the voltage difference between these two terminals? It's VP, yeah, VR, VR equals VP minus zero, still VP. You minus zero is still the same, right? Something minus zero is still that same. That's why the voltage at the, that point, where the node voltage here equals the voltage across that resistor, the same voltage, because you, you just grounded one of the terminals. So what I'm asking, that's a, a resistor network. Okay, that's the two terminals. I just have two probes. The, there's nothing connect to it right now. Okay, this is R1, R2. That's V I, it's V in input voltage. And that's output voltage. So V out equals V out is a is V out the so when I'm talking about V out, I'm referring to the point, right? So the node voltage here compared to where, but I didn't say that, right? So I just I assuming you guys know that. I'm talking about V out to the point here, the voltage at this point is the voltage from this point to where? To the ground. Okay. <laughs> Very simple, but I'm glad you got the point. Okay. I'm talking about V out, which means a Voltage from here to here, okay? So V out equals the voltage across R1, R2. Got it? Here? Because the other term of R2 is ground. That's why V out equals what? V out equals V R two. Does that make sense? Okay. What is the voltage here? This point. Zero. <laughs> because this is just one metal piece. Okay. Ideally, the metal traces, you know, on the paper, I drew on the paper is doesn't have any resistance. So there's no voltage drop, right? But you have a, you asking me like if I have a metal long wire, definitely you know all the metal pieces are not ideal conductors. They have have some internal resistance and it's going to drop the voltage. Won't be exactly at zero anymore. That's why when you design a PCB board like that, <clears throat> okay. Oh, I haven't talked about this. Okay, so uh, we may have a chance in the end of the semester to build a PCB board like this, and it has. So you draw, you're going to draw it in the software and send it out for fabrication. It's very cheap. Uh, and then get a components solder on the board and uh, use it to drive a, a little robot car, uh, try to fly on the, on the ground. And these are two IR sensors. And uh, this is the motor driver. And that's a surface mount amplifier. And that's a dial. That's a capacitor. That's a regulator. And these are the cables connect to the to the motor. Hopefully, I mean we'll see the schedule and you know try to make it consistent with as the other lab section. But hopefully we can we can make it happen for the both of the sections, right? Yeah, be really fun. Oh, what was my question? My question is, 
If you got a PCB, when you design a PCB, one of the considerations when you design a PCB, okay? Do you want to make because you have oh, you have the certain very complicated circuit, but they have this share a common ground. Share a common ground. Okay. It's okay if you don't understand why we share the common ground. But you do need all the components to share the same reference. So five volts here for this component, for this amplifier, it's gonna be five volts for the other component as well. So this guy sees the five volts, and the other guy should see a five volts as well, because they share the same common ground, the same reference. As a zero volts. So how many ground pins do you have in that circuit? How many ground? How many ground nodes? Yeah. One. Yeah. Only one common ground. That's why it's called a common ground. For the for the simple circuit, but for complicated ones, sometimes you have to isolate the IC ground, AC ground, and DC ground, but that's something else. Now, for all these simple um, circuits. Only one common ground in the circuit, keep in mind. So in that case, if I probe it, you'll notice there's a function of the uh, bench top multimeter as well. But this one has that function as well, which is uh, the beep. So you can hear if there's a, a con continuity of the circuit. That's the best, one of the best ways to debug the circuit. So if you can, if I uh, put it here and change it to this uh, channel, or function, you can hear a beep because I'm making a shorting, short circuit. It's shorting the circuit. So in that case, if I probe, since because everything has been printed on the on the board, I couldn't visualize it. Right? It's already below the paint of the board. But if I want to debug the board, if I see issues, I want to tell if the two points are actually shorted together or connected together as I design. This is the best way to do it because I can hear the beep instead of just looking at the resistance, the readings all the time. But I can just focus on the board, look at, look at the board, and for the probes, it's con has all the continuities. So one of the ways is like you could, you're going to see if all the components are sharing the same common ground. So you just put your, um, because here's a ground pin, right? Or the circuit, or the power supply. It's a ground pin of the power supply, and all the other components should share the same ground of the power ground. It's the same metal piece, same wire, okay? And let me find a ground, right? Um, wait. So this is not, so this is on the back. These are not shorted together. So this one is a ground pin on the back. And this is a power module, uh, this is a regulator. There must be a ground pin, I'm sure. So I'm going to probe it and see if you can hear it. So you know that this is a ground pin of the regulator. Make sense? Why is that? Why can I hear the beep? I'm not shorting these two probes, right? Why can I hear the beep? I'm putting it here. And I probe in here. So I know this chip on the board is grounded because I hear the beep if you hear the beep which means they are shorted but I didn't short it like this of how they are shorted together they are shorted on the board that's right that's the same ground on the board you couldn't see it because the traces are printing on the board you couldn't visualize it but they are shorted by metal traces on the board. That's why you can hear the beep. Make sense? It's one of the best ways to debug the circuits. So across the through the semester, I'm gonna show you how to do it, but you should learn how to debug the circuits by past the continuity of the circuit. So what you are doing, you know, for making a circuit, just connecting things up, right? So that's how you can check if they are connected. Then you know if, they are, if the circuit is right. <clears throat> Any questions by far? No? Okay. If we have a battery cell, 1.5 volts, 
and I got another battery cell. 1.5 volts. How do I make a 3 volts power supply? Mm -hmm. Any questions by far? Here. So 3 volts from where to where? From here to here. So can I just say this point is 3 volts? Why? No reference. Where to add reference? If I add a reference here, can I say this point is 3 volts? Yes. What's the voltage from, what's the voltage drop from here to here? 1.5, because a battery did that job for you. So when, you, when we are, when we analyze circuits in circuit one, right, we assume the, the uh, power supplies are ideal power supplies. If I label 1.5 volts, you have to believe that it's 1.5 volts. Make sense? Unless you're shorted. To kill itself. <laughs> You're not getting 1.5 volts, why? It's the same metal, it's gonna be zero volts. And it's gonna drain the battery really quick and you will get nothing, okay? But as long as I have a resistor in here, no matter how much is it, I think at least 100 ohms, okay? And the voltage across it becomes 1.5 volts. Okay. So what's the voltage from here to here? From here to here, what's the voltage? Difference. From here to here. Here to here. What's the voltage difference? Negative 1.5. So you are using this point minus this point. Right? It's negative 1.5 volts. What's the voltage from here? So here, one point five. It's the same metal, right? Same metal piece. What's the voltage from here to here? Three volts. It's the same. Same. What's the voltage at this point? This point. What's the voltage at that point? Why? Come out of where? Come out of the ground. It's 1.5 volts. This point, come out of the ground, is 1.5 volts. Why? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nope. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. The battery just dropped. The battery or drops 1.5 volts for you. Like I told you, it's for manufacturing, you have to assume, you have to believe it's 1.5 volts. So from this point, it's being dropped by 1.5 volts, then you've got zero volts. Or you can say, I know it's zero volts because ground is zero volts, ground is zero volts in circuit one, ground is zero volts. So this is a given, you can start from here, you can start from ground, and this battery, since I believe it's providing a 1.5 volts difference from castle to anode, so it's gonna boost the voltage from the castle to anode by, yes, so this point is, 1.5 volts compared to ground. Okay. How do you make a negative 1.5 volts power supply? You have a device, you want to power it up using a, one, a negative 1.5 volts power supply, and the device is grounded, and here's a voltage input, and You have two 1.5 volts battery cells. So if you do this and ground it, and remember there's only one ground in the circuit, so they are actually shorted together. 
right? If I if I show a label of ground, it's gonna be shorted together. Okay. Then what? Here? Here? To where? Here? Why is providing a negative 1.5 also to it? Think about that. You have a power supply on your bench, right? A bench top power supply. And it has plus minus plus minus. You have three of them. If you are providing a negative 1.5 volts to the device, to whatever on the board, board here. Okay, so the board has, here's a board, right? The board has a power supply, voltage input, and has a ground. And the ground has to be grounded into the middle pin of the two power supplies. And here's the zero volts, right? And the battery is 1.5 volts drop. So we got zero volts here. What's the voltage share? Compared to where? Compared to the ground. We are supplying a negative 1.5 volts to the device. Make sense? Uh, So this becomes 1.5 volts, right? Uh, you, you can choose to use it or not. You don't have to use it. But you do have a negative 1.5 volts being supplied to the, to the device. All right, and here's a breadboard has two rails of power here and two rails of power at the bottom. And the right line, usually we use the right line, the right column here as a anode, power supply, or plus of the power supply. And the black line indicates that these are, usually we want to use it as a castle of the battery or the power supply. But can you connect it uh, oppositely, you know, the other way? It doesn't matter, it's just, you know, we usually don't do that because it labels a plus here, but you, you if you have to, for some reason, connect to the castle, it's okay, just a just a metal piece on the board. Usually we don't do that, okay? So are these all these shorted together or not? All the holes. Yeah, they are shorted together. So all these ones are shorted together. And all the castle uh, holes are shorted together as well. But in between them they are not. Okay? It's a anode castle. And castle, but are the black line here, the black holes here and the black holes here, are they connected together internally? They're not. Same to the plus holes, right holes. And for these ones, five of these, like five or six, five, okay, the five holes in the row, they are shorted together. But different rows, they are not shorted together. So you Yeah, the bribe is pretty simple. If you haven't used it, feel free to ask any questions for now. If you you can open up the instru lab instruction and look at the picture and ask me any question right now if you like or later. Doesn't matter. I have resistor here. I'll give it to you later, okay? Um and because we, we got classes canceled in the first week, so Dr. Jesse was asking me to cover KC on KVL in this lab. So I'm gonna do it really quick. Um, yeah, we still have time. It's until like 5.25, I guess. <laughs> long, long lab.
Yeah, but I don't want to make this recording really long. So when you replay the video, you want to look at examples. Um, I recommend you guys play at 2x speed because it's going to be like probably one hour video. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to upload to YouTube, so just play 2x. Um, let me... Oh, before we do KVL, KCL, we have to do this uh, voltage divider problem first. Right. <clears throat> Plus minus R1, R2, VI. Here's VL. VL. So my quick question is, what is VL? What? Oh, yeah, VR2, yes, yes, but what is VR2? So using the voltage divider theory, you can get it really quickly, and I'm going to show you how we get it using voltage divider series, and it's been used everywhere in electronics. So VL equals, I'm going to write down the equation first for you guys, equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times VI. Okay, we assume that there's only one current uh, flow in the current uh, flow in the circuit. This is just one one channel. There's no other uh, devices are getting you know uh, dividing the currents from the circuit. It's just one one loop, right? So it should be just one current. Keep in mind, just one current. You don't understand what what are currents, but just remember that if you got just one loop, one circuit, there should be only one current flows in the circuit. And I label this current as I. According to Ohm's law, Ohm's law, like B equals I R, I equals to B over R, right? Or R equals B over I. Just keep in mind Ohm's law. Okay. So all, all these came from B equals I R. <clears throat> According to Ohm's law, <clears throat> we know that V I. Um, so the voltage across R2 is getting a current called I. So the amount of current flows through R2 is I. Any questions on this right now? It's only, again, only one current flows in one loop of the circuit. We don't have any devices like I connect another device to divide the current. No, there's nothing. Just one loop, so like one pipe, one water pipe. One water pipe is going to flow the same amount of water in there. Okay, it's only one electrical circuit, only one loop. So this flows the same current for all the devices. Same current for R1, for R2, same current. So what's the voltage? So the voltage across R2 becomes IR2, right? <clears throat> so VO over VI equals I'm trying to get the different. I'm trying to get VO over VI. So what is VO? What is the ratio of VO in the entire voltage power supply, which is VI or V in? So that's the entire voltage being supplied to the circuit. So that's the voltage across the two components, which is the total voltage of the circuit. Okay. And here's the output voltage. It's being divided. And we're trying to find out what is VO, V out here. So now I'm just writing down VL over VI equals, because we know VO where VL is I times R2. Any questions on that? The voltage across R2, which is VL, right, is a current flow through R2, which is I times R2. Any questions? No? So VL is I times R2. And V in, V in is a voltage applied to the two resistors in series. So that becomes I times R1 plus R2. Any questions? Too slow, too fast, too boring, or, you know? 
cases. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Cancel all i, and then you get you got uh, v l equals uh, v i times r two over r one plus r two, so which is exactly this velocity divider theory here, right? This same as this one. And so the conclusion here is, if the circuit all the components share the same same current, it's important because only when they share the same current, I can cancel them out from the top to the bottom. So when the circuit shares all the components share the same current then the voltage ratio or the voltage share of that resist resistor in the circuit equals to the resistance share of that resistor in the entire circuit oh so the voltage share the voltage share equals the resistance share See, here's R2, the ratio of R2 in the entire resistance, right? So that's the resistance share, the same as the voltage share in the, of the, that resistor in the entire resistance. That's the um, core of the voltage divider series. So whenever you see something like that, or I'm going to, there are all different... Uh, circuit uh, style types, it can calculate the voltages really quickly by using those this uh, voltage divider theory. Now I label this as VL. So what is VL here? That's right. <clears throat> and I can label VL here and you can find out the voltage of VL as well. So if I like VL1, so what is VL1? What is VL1? It's a legit question because when I'm asking VL1, then I have a reference in the circuit. So I'm asking VL1 that point compared to the voltage compared to red or uh, and just compared to the zero volts reference. <clears throat> Easy peasy. That's right, yeah, yeah. Why not go to the left? It's not easy to find a reference because you have to cross that power supply. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, that's right. Any questions by far? No, should move forward with KVLs. That can be a good question because you're, yeah, you are thinking a lot of times you are thinking that uh, there must be a upper limit for the resistance, mm -hmm. but actually it's not. It's the other way. Mm -hmm. There is a lower limit, yeah, because if you use very tiny resistors, which means you are drawing a lot of current from the power supply, and a lot of times the power supply is not able to drive it. You cannot change the output voltage because it's not able to drive it. It's trying to supply more current, which will lower the voltage internally. So 
I can tell you that the, the most recent device I designed for a company, there's no limit for resistance. I'm using 100 mega ohms <laughs> as an output resistor because I want to lower that power output because my power supply is not able to supply that. So it's just a voltage supply that's going to generate, you know, you can see the sparks. It's going to arc through something because I'm supplying 3,000 volts through it. And, you know, because I have a super high voltage, so I have to increase the resistance accordingly in order to uh, reduce the current output. Uh, because my, my power supply cannot supply that high current output. You know, that's why I have to increase the resistance in order to uh, supply the exact desired uh, voltage of the output, like 3,000 volts, right? So you don't have upper limit for the resistance, but you have lower limit. Yeah, so the low resistors uh, or the motors I just showed you, so the motors are usually has an internal resistance of 50 ohms, and the 50 ohms motor is considered as a heavy load. So change your mind, like 50 ohms, it's very heavy load. 100 mega ohms is a super, super light load. <laughs> 100 mega ohms is a light load, but 50 ohms is heavy load. KVL, Kirchhoff voltage law, and I never memorized like what the statement is, but it's literally just uh, showing you that if you add all the voltages uh, together in the loop, you are getting zero volts. Why is that? I'm supplying some voltage to the circuit, but I'm getting zero volts. <laughs> yeah, you are, you are you start from zero volts. So use the same example. Uh, again, uh, you know the way we we teach the Jessing and myself, we teach the KVL and KCL might be slightly different, but they're eventually they're the same thing. If you use either way, you should get the same result. So please don't copy that. They literally say the same different way. <laughs> okay. VI and I ground the castle of the circuit. How do we make a zero volts? Very simple, KVL. Never memorize anything. Okay. You start from the point. I always show students there's a little person start hiking through the circuit. Just go through it, come back to the original point. And if you see a minus sign here, you put a minus in the front of the voltage. If you see a plus, just directly put the plus sign in the, in the, in the equation. Like for example, VI, VI is the voltage of the battery, for example, 1.5 volts. Okay, 1.5 volts, okay? It's a 1.5 battery, I put it in there which is 1.5 volts equals VI. If I start from here, I see a minus sign here first, right? It's gonna be minus 1.5 volts. Plus sign, so plus sign, VR1, VR2, a zero volts. Why this works? Why it is zero volts? Yeah, bad battery started as negative 1.5 volts. If I move this one here to the right side of the equation, I'm getting VR1 plus VR2 equals 1.5 volts, right? Which is exactly correct because I'm applying 1.5 volts across the resist two resistors and they should have a 1.5 volts drop across the two resistors. Why not, why not 1.2? So if I have a 1.5 volts battery supply voltage to the two resistor in series, and the two resistors, how are they so intelligent? They just exactly know they should drop 1.5 volts. They have to, they, they have to drop 1.5 volts. How do they know that? Why is they so smart? Why is there so smart to follow the law? That's 
Because when, when I'm talking about the voltage across the two resistors in a circuit, how do I measure it? I put this guy to the DC voltage channel, right? Okay, I'm gonna probe. How do I probe it? So I put the two resistors in the circuit with the power supply. You are gonna do that in the lab. Okay, there's this part one of the lab. So I got two resistors in the lab. I'm gonna probe it. I got two probes, red and black. Okay. And the two resistors, they are so smart and they are going to drop exactly 1.5 volts in the circuit for me. Why? Because it's the same circuit, same wire, same metal across the battery. <laughs> I connect to the battery. That's why they have to drop 1.5 volts. So if I change the resistance, I change it to like 10K, 20K instead of 1K, 2K, and they are still so smart, I change the resistance, but they still drop 1.5 volts across the two terminals because I just connected them to the two terminals of the battery. Okay. If I probe this part, if I, I'm getting 1K ohms here, 1K. And this, this guy, R2, is 2K ohms. <clears throat> And again, another question, why do we usually use like 1K, 2Ks instead of <laughs> smaller ones so it's easier for calculation? Well, always like 1K, 2K, 3K, 5K, 10K, like 100K, rarely, but why we don't just try to use like 1 ohm, 2 ohms, 3 ohms, 10 ohms, is easier for calculation. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, small resistors are are very heavy load, right? They're heavy load. So I would prefer using these ones so the battery can last for longer. It's not generating too much heat in the circuit, protect the circuit. So if I probe, it's a good number here. 1.5 volts, 1K, 2K. What's the rating? But what's the what's the rating? What's the rating? What's the rating here? Zero volts. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. It's zero volts. It is, it is zero volts right now. What's the rating in if I have this circuit? One point five. I got 2K, 1K, right? So what's the current in the whole circuit? Let's, let's do this easier. So I remember the voltage divider theory. So what's the equation for that? Calculate it right now, okay? I'll give you like 20 seconds. Just let me know. Here, if I probe here. Yes. Yep, that's right. Got one? Everyone got one? Cool. All right. So what is this? 
Yeah, it's 1.5 minus 1, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, I think you guys are pretty good at all the dividers right now. Uh, now, KBL, you'll know this is KBL, KCL, Kirchhoff current law instead of voltage law. So the KCL is if there's a voltage, if there's a node in the circuit, <laughs> All the current, all the current flows into that node. If you add them together, you are getting uh, zero amps. It just disappeared. Did it disappear? If I got zero amps, how do I drive the circuit? So here's a node, I1, I2, I3. So instead of having four, I'm adding three here as this in the circuit. So if I label the direction of the currents like that, like this, they're all pointing to the same node, right? They're flowing into the node. Boom, nothing. <laughs> Why? That's right, that's right. <laughs> so now let's convert it into a different way, okay? So I2 flows in that direction, and I can label it as um, so you just imagine that the two currents are going in that direction and they merge at the node and they're going to flow out of the node physically, right? It should. So then I'm going to label the current here as I2 prime. So I2 prime equals what? Equals negative I2. And because if you just look at circuit, which makes sense to us is I1 plus I3, they merge, right? So the current, like two water pipes, they merge and then become one, so I1 plus I3 should be I2 prime. Right? And I2 prime is negative I2. And I move I2 to the left, I'm getting I1 plus I2 plus I3 is zero. Right? That's how, how this uh, come to this conclusion here. Don't let it confuse you, it's just moving it to the other side of the equation. Any questions on this? I'm going to scan this note and upload it to the to canvas. So I'm getting this later. But just remind, after we get the conclusion, you know, in the future, just use it, right? Whenever you're analyzing circuits, you have all the currents, you assume the currents flowing that way and then add them together, you can find out, you can equal that to zero so you can do the calculations. This is easier for calculations. Same for the KVL stuff. Okay. And I saw that uh, on Dr. Jensen's notes, um, he talked about uh, current source and voltage source. Hmm. Is this another resistor or not? Let's just use this. Okay, this is VI, R1, R2. You have, have, sometimes you have a multiple sources here, just making things complicated. Just testing, guys, 
if you know how to calculate it, right? This is a, this is the multi source here, multi source, vi, um, v1, v2. Let's just look at that. This is i1. Keep in mind, like I said, right? If I told you that in the circuit, the voltage, the voltage uh, of this power supply is v1. You have to believe that it's v1. Like this one, v2 is it's going to be v2. So that means the voltage across these two terminals will be v2. The voltage across these two terminals will be v1. And the current flows in that branch it's going to be i1. Don't doubt that. It's going to be i1 forever. Is it going to be i1 here? No, because you got another branch dividing that current. You got two pipes. Okay. Is it i1 here? Yes. Is it I1 here? Yes, you don't have another branch. Still I1, still same pipe. So it'll be I1 here. All right. So in that case, because usually if it's the ideal current source, it's gonna tell you what, what the current is. Right? Assume that this is a constant. We know I1 is a constant. And since we know the current flow through R2 is I1, so we know what? So we know the voltage across it is going to be, so the voltage is going to drop from left to right. Why is that? According to Ohm's law, you got a resistor, R1. If you flow a current through the resistor, you got a voltage drop. That's Ohm's law. Forget about all the other concepts, right? How, how they put it in the textbook. Whenever you got a resistor, you flow a current through it, you got a voltage drop. And V equals IR, R equals V over I, just whatever, right? Just do the old equations. That's all as well. Keep in mind, current, resistor, drop. Resistor, current, drop. It's going to happen. And we call it VR1. And that voltage drop is from here to here. That's the direction of the current flow. Which means the left side is higher than the right, right side, right-hand side. It's dropping in that direction. So that's why here's higher. Okay, same with this one. So current, this one is doing a current in that direction. Okay, right? So which side is going to be a higher voltage for this, this resistor? At least how you label it, right? So this is, there's another voltage source. So adding some uncertainties in there, but if we are assuming that current is flowing that direction, just when you are doing the calculations, right, just assume here's plus, here's minus for the voltage drop for the R2. Start getting VR2. I'm going to label it as here to here is VR2. Okay. And could you find out, uh, let me see, the voltage. I just made it up, so I'm just thinking about like other questions I can ask. So you got a voltage across this component, and you know the voltage across this component. This is given. And do you know the voltage across this component? You do not, because you don't know the current flows through it. Can you get a current flow through it? You are missing some information in this circuit. So for the ideal current source, are there going to be any voltage drops across it? There will. But are, is, is that given? Usually not. You have to assume a Vx or something over there. So now I can see we got V1, which is the entire voltage drop across the circuit. And we don't know R1, Vr1 yet. And we know the voltage here, we know the voltage here. And we don't know the voltage here, so we are missing some information in the circuit. Cannot solve it. Can we? If I remove this wire, then we can't. So current flows through here. It's not being distracted to so focus on the same circuit and come back to the source. Is the current going to through, flow through the source or not? Yes, it's a circuit. What's the current flow through the source? Yeah. So you got to drop. We can calculate that, which is I1 times R1. 
So you know the voltage here, you know the voltage here, you know the voltage here, according to what, KVL? You can calculate the voltage across this guy. How to do that? You just assume this one here is plus or minus like VI1, okay? And using KVL, you add all the voltages in the circuit together, starting from here, like a person walking through the circuit, and you see a minus sign first. So it's gonna be minus V1 and plus I1 R1 and plus I1 R2 minus or plus minus minus or plus plus given 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 can you calculate this? Yes. That's how you apply KBL in the circuit to calculate something. And it definitely you can use, uh, you know, if you see other types of circuit in the future, you will be able to calculate the uh, node voltages using KCL as well in the future. Just remember that all the currents flow into the node is zero. And you can find out the current by doing uh, by using voltages and uh, voltages over current uh, over resist resist resistance. Give me an example <clears throat> of the same circuit. Okay, this circuit. I'm trying to solve the circuit. These are all given values. Definitely, if you know as a, a power supply and you know the resistance, you, you should calculate every single circuit and calculate all the currents flow through every single resistor, calculate the voltages at each node. You can do that, but how to do that? There are so many ways to do it. And now we are talking about KCL. How to do KCL? We have to look, find one node here. And we label the voltage here as Vx. How can you just name a name a node uh, as a voltage? So the voltage here is Vx compared to the ground. Okay. Vx equals the vo equals to the voltage across R3. Right? Also at R2. This is ground. It's ground, 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 ground. Same ground, same metal piece. Okay. So let's see how we apply KCL uh, here. I1, I2, I3. How, will, how do we find these currents? And then we add them together equals zero so we can calculate we can solve the circuit, okay? So what is I1? So according to Ohm's law, right? So the current flows through the resistor equals uh, voltage, voltage drop across it. Uh, you know, this times is equals to the voltage drop. So the voltage we know this point is VI compared to where? The ground. So we know this node, this node is VI, this node is VX, so we can find the current by doing VI minus VX over R1, and which is I1. Plus I2. Here should be I2. How do we how do we get an I2 here in the circuit using Ohm's law? Oh, all right. Is the current flowing up? So I should label like that, right? Plus minus. Same here. Should be plus minus. So what is I2? How do we represent it? What's the voltage here? 
What's the voltage here? Zero minus Vx over R3. Okay, that's I2 plus I3. So what is I3? I3 float that way, that direction. And what's the voltage here? Zero volts. And what's the voltage here? Vx over R2 equals zero amps. According to um, ACL, this is one of the ways to calculate it. Any questions by far? Are good. So you need so you need to find the current going into the node because KCL tells us oh if you add all the currents together the currents must go in all the currents must uh, you know uh, pointing to the point right so if you add them together you are getting zero so now we want to form that equation something add together equals zero so we know this we should know these currents first so how do we get the currents the use Ohm's law, right? Because we're trying to find out the currents, so we have to find the voltage drop first, and then use the voltage drop divide uh, divided by the resistance. Then we get a current for every single resistor. Then we add them together to get zero. So that's KCL. It doesn't matter there are resistors, there are current sources, there are voltage sources. Doesn't matter. You, you just have to find out all the currents first then put in the equation to get a zero, and then calculate uh, these values. Okay, are you guys ready to you know, go through the lab instruction? Okay. All right. Um, I think the first one is to build a resistor network for simple. I mean, give you a uh, 1k and 2k ohms resistors. You can grab it here. Okay. Let me draw on the paper really quick. We're so not getting confused. I'm trying to draw the circuit that the way you should uh, connect them. So here's a power supply. So for the first uh, experiment, you get a power supply. I have the red and black. I've set it up as it's a voltage here. Five volts. So set it up for five volts. I'm gonna show you how to do it really quick. So got a red terminal on the top and black terminal at the bottom. <laughs> And yeah, so then you got a breadboard, okay? I got two rails, the red line, the black line. And got five, five, okay. And in the middle, 
So you introduce that power to here, and then the black line should go to here, and then you uh, have a resistor connect to here, and then another resistor connect to here. That's, for example, 1K, 2K. And the other term of the 2K has to be shorted to ground. And this one has to be shorted to the power, which is the right line. OK? And then you can measure the voltages in between them. Does that make sense? I can help you. I can do it real quick for you guys if you are not sure about how to do it. You, you just probe it like what I just did in the other examples. But when you probe current, you have to break the circuit. So like uh, you have a power supply here. I got a resistor, I got another resistor. Okay, if you probe the voltage for the first resistor, you got a probe here. And the second probe has to be where? Ground, since you need a zero reference. If you probe the voltage here, Still, the black one has to be at the ground, and you just probe here and do it readings. If you want to probe the current, I'm going to show you how to do it, um, for each of you guys, hopefully. You have to break the circuit, for example. Just break it. Not really physically break it, right? It's just uh, disconnect it. And then connect. You have to change, change the channel to current measuring channel and connect the red probe here, and so this is gonna go through, the current is gonna go through the meter, and then you connect the black here. You, literally, you are just putting your current meter, a uh, current, current uh, monitor in series with your circuit. So the current is gonna flow through the meter, so it's able to sense it, right? You have to disconnect it. Okay, I'm gonna stop the videos like one hour and 20 minutes almost.